You know, crashes are horrible, absolutely horrible, regardless of the circumstances. But I think you've seen here this morning that when you add alcohol to the mix, how life-changing and devastating those consequences can be. Sadly, this happens way too many times on roads here in this area. You know, I told you a little earlier about my days as a sportscaster here in town. During that time, I had the opportunity to interview a lot of what you would consider sports stars, including our special guest this morning. It's an honor for me to introduce to you Saran Stacy, a former University of Alabama running back who played from 1989 to 1991. Saran was a two-year starter with the Crimson Tide and a two-time All-SEC performer. He's one of only 12 players in school history to rush for 1,000 yards in a season and still ranks second in the Alabama record books with 18 touchdowns and 108 points scored in a single season. After graduating from Alabama, Saran moved on to the NFL, becoming a second round pick of the Philadelphia Eagles back in 1992. So why is Saran here with us today? Because of a night two years ago that changed his life forever. On November 19, 2007, the Stacy family van was hit by a drunk driver. Saran lost his wife and four of his five children. Saran is here today because of his desire to share his message of grace and survival in the face of difficulty. Please help me welcome former University of Alabama running back Saran Stacy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, thank, I thank God for allowing me to be here with you this morning. I, I think the, the, the drug uh, enactment uh, uh, class, uh, the committee, uh, I thank all of the, the armed force officers, the, the paramedics, everyone uh, that they have sacrificed in making this opportunity uh, this morning for all of you. We, we're, we're here because uh, uh, we, we, we love you. We, we're here because uh, we want to make it uh, your life, the choices that you make in your life every single day, absolutely real. See, see, here it is on, on, on November the 11th in the, in the year 2007, I was, I was on my way home uh, it, it was Thanksgiving. It was a holiday. It was uh, uh, it was a time of celebration. It was a time when uh, my family uh, was the first time we were together uh, in almost uh, 20 years, and all of my brothers and sisters were home, and 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 we were all talking about the different things that we were going to do for Thanksgiving. And 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 I got my family. We got into the vehicle uh, in my van, and we started driving. Uh, to my home, which is in Newton, Alabama. Uh, I, I stopped through Hartford, Alabama and picked up uh, my eldest daughter and, 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 and my nine-year-old daughter, uh, Lucretia and Sydney Marie. Uh, I had fathered uh, 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 them in a previous relationship before I was married, and, and Lucretia was actually home. Uh, she was in uh, uh, LBW College in Andalusia, Alabama. Uh, she had played girls uh, fast pitch softball. Uh, uh, she was, I tell you what, she was a young African American girl that, that absolutely loved what she was doing. She, she loved her education. She, she, she was a content young girl. She was, she was, she was, I never had any problems with her uh, saying uh, 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 what someone else had that she didn't have. You know, that I see too many of our teenagers are not thankful for what they have. You know, you need to be thankful that you have a mother. You need to be thankful that you have a father. Yeah, you need to be thankful. You know, she was, she was just that type, and, and she was over there in Andalusia, and, and, and she was doing great in school. And, and, and my wife and I, we, we wanted to surprise her by buying her a new car for her birthday. She had a great uh, grade point average, and, and she was actually leading a Bible study uh, a class over there with, with, her, with her teammates. And, 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 and her birthday was November the 20th. Her birthday was November the 20th. And she came home and, 
And so we're leaving Geneva where I was born and raised and, and we're coming to Hartford. And, and, and I said, my wife said, let's pick up uh, uh, Lucretia, we call her Tootie. Let's pick up Tootie and, and Sydney and let's all go to the house together. I stopped and, and I picked them up and, and, and the seven of us uh, started heading towards uh, my home in Newton, Alabama. And, and I was exactly one mile uh, away from my home, one mile away from my home. It was an intersection. Uh, I, 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 was, I was not speeding. I, I was not doing anything irregular. Uh, I was not drunk. I was not high. I was not, I was not driving reckless. I was just with my, with my wife and the seven of us uh, 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 going home. And, and all of a sudden at this intersection, an individual that was driving twice the legal limit consumed with alcohol. Uh, the witness said that the light turned, turned green and I start driving through the intersection and he struck us from the side. He struck my van. In that moment, in that, when he struck my van, he, 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 he took my wife. He, he took my 18-year-old daughter. He, he took my 10-year-old son, Bronson Alexander Stacy. He took my 9-year-old daughter. And he took my 2-year-old baby. They, they tell me, they tell me in 2008, after, I kind of, you know, I, I don't remember anything that happened that night. They, they, they said I, I, I was in a coma and, and they took me directly from the wreckage and, and, and they took me to the hospital. I, I don't recall one word that I said to my wife. I don't recall a word that I said to my son or to my daughter. And, and here it is. I have to live not knowing. I have to live without, 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 who was saying something? You know, they said it was about, they said, man, they said it was about 20 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes before they can get to the scene. And when the paramedics got to the scene, when the officers got to the scene, they said it was so horrific. They said it was so horrific that, that they had to be attended to. They said the paramedics people were actually passing out. They, they said it was so horrible what they saw. They saw, they, saw, they saw my family in this van. They said it was about 25 minutes before they could get in. And I thought to myself, for that 25 minutes, it was the last time I was in that, it was the last time we were a family together. You know, who was, I think to myself, who was saying something to me? Somebody was saying, you know, when, when, when he hit, what, somebody was saying something to me. And I, and I remember talking to the state trooper in the year of 2008. I remember asking him, I, I asked him, I said, I said, when you got there, who was alive? I said, who was alive? He looked me in the face. He looked me in the face and then he put his head down like this. When he put his head down, I knew, you see, I knew that somebody was alive. He go on to say, he said, it was quick, Mr. Stacy. He said, it was quick. He said, it was just quick. But when he looked away, it told me that somebody, he was trying to, he was trying to spare my feelings. He was trying to, he was trying to spare me. That when he got there, that, that, that somebody was crying out to, to, to their father. It wasn't my wife. It wasn't my son saying, Dad, I need your help. Was it, was it my daughter saying, you know, Daddy, get up. I don't know. See, I don't, I don't, I don't have any recollection. I have to, you know, that happened November the 19th. I have to go back to November the 11th to, to, to remember the last words I've said to my wife. A whole week of my life, I, I can't even recall.